My name is Pat Chin, and I'm an organizer with special focus on Haiti for the International Action Center. Part of the U.S. and French-backed destabilization of the administration of President Jean Bertrand Aristide included a well-financed campaign of media disinformation. While it's true that Aristide made mistakes, we've heard a mountain of negative criticisms, many of them grossly exaggerated or just outright lies. That's right, it's a bunch of lies. We don't hear in the big business media, for example, about Aristide's concrete implementation of a progressive agenda. We don't hear about the universal schooling program aimed at giving every child an education. That's right. More schools were, in fact, built in Haiti from 1994 to the year 2000 under Aristide than between 1804 to 1994, many in rural areas where no schools existed before. We don't hear about the 70% government subsidy of school books and uniforms and expanded school lunch and school bus programs. We don't hear about government scholarships for the poor. Nor do we hear about the literacy program that before the coup had some 320,000 enrollees. Many literacy centers also provided low-cost meals to communities in need. Also missing from, from the propaganda is an initiative to defend children's rights, affecting some 400,000 young children, mostly girls, who work as domestics. This is a significant preventative measure against trafficking in young people. There's, been, there's also been improvements in health care. In 2002, the school of midwifery was renovated, as were the maternity wards of eight public hospitals. 800 Cuban health care workers now work in Haiti's rural areas. Viva Cuba! Viva Fidel! And 325 Haitians are now training to become doctors in Haiti, in Cuba. There is also a new medical school that's been occupied by U.S. Marines since Aristide was forced from office. That's right, let's get them out of there. International experts have lauded Haiti's initiative to coordinate AIDS treatment and prevention. These programs represented a progressive agenda that gave hope to the people of Haiti, as demonstrated by the huge popular support that Aristide maintained, even after implementing parts of the IMF's restructuring program that are so very anti-people. Other programs that would have involved the delivery of clean water and housing projects could not move forward after the U.S. instigated economic, the economic blockade of grants and loans to the government in an attempt to bring the economic pressure aspect of the destabilization campaign. The Aristide government's implementation of programs aimed at helping Haiti's poor, which is the majority of the population, and its continued popularity are the main reason why Aristide was ousted, kidnapped, and forced into exile. Let's start telling the truth about Haiti. Tonight, we will hear from a variety of speakers who will not only expose the lies told about Haiti, but who will surely inspire us to energize and grow in leaps and bounds the U.S. solidarity movement with Haiti. Thank you. Ossie Davis, which I'm sure most of you know, is an actor, activist, and a featured speaker at the funerals of both Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Orsi Davis is here tonight as Frederick Douglass, the great abolitionist leader and former ambassador to Haiti, 
reading one of Douglas's great speeches on Haiti. Please join me on welcoming Asa Davis. Brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I consider myself highly blessed by both my God and my history to find myself in this place at this time among this branch of my extended family. <clears throat> when I was a child in a school in Georgia and we had Negro History Week, it was not to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and the others that I paid tribute and salute. The revolutionary fathers that I worshiped and the people who gave me my identity was Toussaint Louverture and the Haitian Patriot. <laughs> Haiti is still a part of the mother of me and if mother calls, what can I do but answer? <laughs> My pleasure is tonight to share with you this letter by the Honorable Frederick Douglass on Haiti at the World's Fair in Jackson Park, Chicago, January 2nd, 1893. My subject is Haiti, the Black Republic. I am to speak to you of her character, her history, her importance and her struggle from slavery to freedom and to statehood of the hearing of bearing of her example as a free and independent republic upon what may be the destiny of the African race in our own country and elsewhere. Her proximity alone should make her make us deeply interested in her welfare, her history, her progress, and her possible destiny. Yet, we turn the cold shoulder. The reason for coolness between the countries is this. Haiti is black. And we have not yet forgiven Haiti for being black. After Haiti has shaken off the fetters of bondage, and long after her freedom and independence has been recognized by all civilized nations, we continue to refuse to acknowledge the fact and treat her as outside the sisterhood of nations. From the beginning, Haiti and its inhabitants have, for various reasons, been very much in the thoughts of the American people. While slavery existed amongst us, her example was a sharp thorn in, the, in our side and a source of alarm and terror. She came into the sisterhood of nations through blood. She was described at the time of her advent as the very hell of horrors. Her very name was pronounced with a shudder. She was a startling and frightful surprise and a threat to all slaveholders throughout the world. With all her faults, you and I and all of us have reason to respect Haiti for her services to the cause of liberty and human equality throughout the world. And for the noble qualities she exhibited in, in all the trying conditions of her early history. We should not forget that the freedom you and I enjoy today, that colored people enjoy in the West Indies, 
that has come to the colored race the world over is largely due to the brave stand taken by Haiti. Their swords were not drawn and could not be drawn simply for themselves alone. They were linked and interlinked with their race and striking for their freedom, they struck for the freedom of every black man in the world. I regard her as the original pioneer emancipator of the 19th century. History, history will be searched in vain for a warrior more humane, more free from the spirit of revenge, more disposed to protect his enemies, and less disposed to practice retaliation for acts of cruelty than General Toussaint Louverture. If it be true that all present and all the future rest upon the past, there is a solid ground to hope for Haiti. There is a fair chance that she may yet be highly progressive, prosperous, and happy. I will not, I cannot believe that her star is to go out in darkness, but I will rather believe that whatever may happen of peace or war, Haiti will remain in the firmament of nations and will shine on and shine on forever. <laughs> thus, thus spoke the magic words of Frederick Douglass. And I need only to remind you it was he who said, where there is no struggle, there is no progress. He also said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, it never will. Haiti, Haiti will continue to live. Haiti will prosper if we pay her back for the blood she has already sacrificed for our freedom. I leave you, I let my, I let my heart speak for me and for all my people when I say to you, long live Haiti.